Hi, my name's Stuart from Creative Outdoors and we're going to be looking at uh, making a downwind sailing rig today out of two canoes, uh, looking at the kit that you need and the knots that you need. Okay, so we're going to have a quick look and introduce the bits of kit that we're going to use to make the uh, downwind sailing rig today. First off, we're going to use two, uh, two poles here, two canoe poles. They don't have to be poles, uh, but we've got those in the boat with us. Likewise, in the same vein, we've got two throw lines here, throw bags with carabiners attached. They're going to be uh, in the boat already, or certainly are in my setup. Uh, if not, two nice long pieces of, uh, of pieces of rope there. Make sure it's floating line. We've got one, two, three, four bits of rope that we're going to use for lashing. And we have two straps here that in, in this case are uh, canoe trailer straps. They come in very handy, but could also be uh, bits of floating line as well. We're also going to use a shelter sheet, okay? Um, and also one final thing, uh, a big nice thick piece of wood. Uh, in this case it's like uh, I've got a, 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 a fence post but you can find anything and anything to, uh, to uh, attach the two canoes together. So the first step is to set up the two boats and the raft ready for the downwind sail itself. Things to think about are making sure that you uh, pair up, if you can, pair up uh, boats of a similar shape and size. These are two different shapes in terms of their rocker uh, and also in terms of the setup of their seats, but uh, they are both the same size. So they'll, they'll do, uh, it's just important to make sure that you pair up so that the seats or things that you can uh, lash to are in a similar position. Once you've got them paired up, make sure it's on land rather than the water, it makes it far easier. Find your spar, okay, in this case our fence post here, Position the boats so that you've got a nice gap in between, you've got to have a gap, uh, and then utilise the length of the spar that you've got. So in this case I've spread it out uh, with just a little bit overlapping on either end. And what I'm going to do now is fix it in two positions, making sure that the spar is attached to the yoke, in this case the carrying yoke in the middle. I'm going to use my canoe trailer strap, I'm going to pass it round. Feed the strap in like usual and pull it as tight as possible. And a point to note there is I've done that in the thin part of the carrying yoke uh, so that if it does, there's a bit of any, any slippage, it's not going to get any looser. Now after that I'm going to run the extra end, the extra part of the strap there over to the other side of the boat. If uh, you've got time and the money, uh, you can snip that there, get another couple of uh, canoe straps, and then you've got a really quick and easy way of strapping on the, uh, the spar to the middle of the boat. From that first point of attachment, I'm going to run the rest of the strap across to the other side, and then I'm going to clove hitch it to the other thin part of the carrying yoke. Try and keep it as ni nice as tight as possible. Like so. Now, of course, that can slip, especially if we've got a tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm then going to pass this through in between the two parts, so in between the spar and the carrying yoke. I'm going to go round this three times, pulling as tight as possible after each one, and that's going to really, really tighten up the, uh, the knot, create a nice tight bond between the two bits of wood, and therefore a nice, strong raft. Finishing off one more time with a clove hitch.
So I just asked you to do a clove hitch. Uh, so for those who don't know what a clove hitch is, it's a great hitch knot to go round a pole. Okay, and this is it here. Uh, just in this case, a rope rather than a piece of strap. So the way to do this knot, you want to find an end, pass that end over the top of the pole that you want to attach, reach under, grab the end, pull it up, and lay it across the rope like so. Once you've done that, you can then reach under, grab the end again, and then place it through the loop, pulling that nice and tight, like so. Uh, as the ropes are pulled together, these two strands here okay, are pulled together and they create a lot of friction. Okay, that can be used under a huge amount of tension, huge amount of load, but then can very easily at the end be taken apart. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, now that we've got our central strut in place, uh, is to make the raft really nice and strong. Okay, the way we're going to do that is we're going to attach the, the bows together and then the sterns together. Now on these boats we should have some painters and that's what we're going to use. I'm going to reach over, grab the painter of this boat here, I'm going to pass it under and through the carrying handle and try and pull it in nice and tight. Now if you look down the boat, hopefully you can see that there's a, there's a V shape. So this is going to be the front of our, our sailing rig and these uh, bows now are positioned so they're just sort of slightly nose uh, closer together than at the stern. That's going to make it cut through the water nicely and uh, be more controlled. What I'm going to do now is head down to the back of the boat. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Pull it nice and tight and uh, let's hear sort of a bit of a creaking with the boats to, to really get that tension right. I'm gonna take the painter rope, I'm gonna pass it through the carrying handle. And at that point, I'm gonna pull nicely with the painter, pushing the, uh, the boat that I'm attached to, just pulling it in slightly, you can hear the creaking going on. At that point, I can then pass the, the knot, or rather the rope underneath, and uh, lock it into place, and that's gonna help me to finish off uh, what I need to do. Now, the next part is um, to finish off, effectively a clove hitch, but with a loop in it, a bite, um, so that it's a quick release knot. So the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna pass the rope through, and under, I'm then going to make a bite of rope, pass that through, and pull that nice and tight. Leaving a nice loop there, a nice bite, and then a strand down uh, that can be reached nice and easily uh, in the event that this thing needs to be uh, broken down quickly. All that needs to happen now is you can pull the end of the strand, and away it goes. Okay, so now we've got our, our raft attached at the bow, the centre and at the stern. And as you can see now, these boats will be nice and strong together and uh, move as one. Right, so we've got our raft now uh, nice and stable and strong. Now we want to do is uh, get this uh, sailing rig up and running. So I've attached the, the two poles that we have to the boat. In this case, the kneeling thwarts, because they were the, they were the two bits that lined up the best. If you look at the bow uh, seat positions, they're slightly offset, so they're not gonna work for me. 
So I've switched the boats round so they are technically now stern first, but of course just remember their uh, symmetrical shape. We're using the kneeling thwarts as uh, the point where the sailing, uh, the mast here that we're creating is going to be fixed. I've used square lashings so these poles can go up vertically and because I'm on my own I've done it a slightly different way and I'm now going to drop these poles down they're going to rotate on their lashing uh, so I can do the diagonal lashing at the top to make an A-frame. Okay so when you're doing a, a diagonal lashing or any lashing as it is um, it's important that um, it's not necessarily about the amount of rope you use it's about how tight it is um, and how neat it is really um, so with that I only try and do uh, a maximum of three turns in any one direction now for a diagonal lashing we've laid our two poles across here and this is the area I want to lash and I'm going to go in three different directions three different planes um, starting with a clove hitch uh, on one of the poles all right so we'll use this top pole here and we'll do a clove hitch like we've done before okay so now i'm going to start to uh, go round in my chosen direction in this case i'm going to go round this way going across these two bringing them together keeping it nice and tight as we go so that's my first turn. Second. And third. Okay, notice that I've, I've tried to keep it as, as uh, neat as possible. Okay, next I'm going to go round uh, the other direction. one, pulling in all the rope as you go, two, I'm going to keep it as neat as possible and as tight as possible, and three. Finally then, to draw it all together, squeeze it in nice and tight and lock it into position we want to be going now in the third direction which is around this way on top of this one and below this one for another three keeping the tension going three there we go okay so what I then need to do is make sure it's tied off and it doesn't start to slip and unravel so uh, in this way uh, you can see the strand is coming down there I'm going to finish off with a finishing locking clove hitch there I'm going to keep it tight as we go And there we go. So now we're going to look at a square lashing. Uh, a similar sort of setup um, to a uh, diagonal lashing, but in this case what we're going to do is we're going to join two poles that are at right angles to each other. We need to still keep it nice and tight as we pull the strands around and join the two poles together. We also need to try and keep it as neat as possible to help us out uh, and to control how we finish it. So first thing we're going to do, as uh, we did before, is we're going to do a clove hitch. Slide that into position. And then we're going to 
move uh, the rope under and over, under and over, under and over. Again, a maximum of three times. So that's under, that's over, that's under, and that's over. Now as I'm doing that, I want to be pulling that nice and tight. There we go, that's the first time round. The second. Finally, the third. Now, once I've got that nice and tight, or as tight as I can make it at the moment, it's now our chance to draw it all in and, uh, and really bite those two poles together. Okay, so now I'm going to go round above this pole here and underneath this pole here three times And finally, the third time. Now again, as the strand finishes coming down here, this is the pole that I want to be um, doing my locking clove hitch on. I'm going to keep it still nice and tight. If we let it go now, it can still all come unraveling. And there it is. Alright, so I've just finished my diagonal lashing here. Uh, that has created the apex, the, uh, the point where the two poles that I've joined at the base of the two boats together, this is going to create our mast. Um, all I need to do now is create the fixings uh, to be able to haul the sail up and uh, let it down again to depower the rig if we need to. Right, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to, with the extra bit of rope that I have, just bring it up and drop it out uh, down the, the apex there and I'm going to make a little uh, overhand, uh, overhand knot on the bite, okay, like so. Just with a little loop and I'm going to take one of the carabiners that uh, are normally attached to my throw lines, I'm going to attach that on there ready to rock and roll. I'm going to leave that uh, dangling down. Now I've still got a bit of uh, uh, rope left, you can do whatever you want with that. Uh, for me I'm just going to wrap that round a few more times, let's keep it nice and uh, tidy around the boat and on the rig, saves things getting caught. So I'm just going to wrap that round loosely and then finally finish it off with of course, another clove hitch. So, um, we've got this apex done, we've got the A-frame, and it's all attached. Uh, we've got the clips ready to uh, uh, add the sail to. Now what we need to do is make sure this is less floppy and loose as it's going up and down. So, uh, when it's upright, and actually slightly further back towards the stern, we're going to have a, a rope that's going from here, at the bow of one boat, up to the top and all the way down to the stern uh, to keep it nice and rigid. Okay, So we've got to set that up now and there's a little bit of trial and error involved to make sure that pole there is in the right place. So you might have to lift it and lower it a couple of times. First thing we want to do though is tie a round turn of two half hitches onto one of the handles 
uh, on the bow of a boat. Doesn't matter which one. The round turn and two half hitches that I've just mentioned. Again, recapping for those who are a bit unsure, don't know what I'm talking about. Round turn and two half hitches, here we go. So take the strand um, with the end, pass that over the top of the pole, and we're gonna make one complete revolution. Making sure though, you've still got a nice uh, amount at the end. So that's your round turn and the two half hitches. Here we go. So taking the, the, the strand that's got the rest of the, uh, the rope attached to it and the end, we're gonna pass the end over the top and then pass it back through the hole that we've created or the loop. Pull that tight. And then we're gonna do exactly the same thing again. Over the top, pass the end under and through the loop that we've just created and we'll pull that tight. Okay, and this bit here works a similar sort of uh, way to the clove hitch because if you look at it there you might re recognize it as a clove hitch there we go um, and it pulls the two strands together that keeps it nice and tight and that will slide nicely into position again huge amount of strain and pressure can be pulled onto it but yet you can then even under pressure as I'm holding and pulling on this bit you can still loosen and away you go so one more time So, one more time. Okay, next then, we're gonna give it a, a fair bit of slack, I reckon. Um, give it loose, because what we wanna do is, um, uh, as it pulls up it's going to become tight uh, and with that slack I'm then going to go to one of the end of the poles and do a clove hitch. <clears throat> Alright so now I'm going to pull on the other end and this thing should hoist up uh, and if I've done it correctly then this rope here will go tight uh, when the poles of this mast are just slightly tilting towards the stern of the raft itself. So we're nearly there, we've got our aim frame ready to be hoisted up, but we need to make sure we've just got the last bits of kit ready to go. What we need to do with this shelter sheet now is uh, create the sail. We're gonna create a spinnaker, because it's a, down, a downwind sailing rig. Uh, and I'm gonna use now one of my throw lines now. We don't wanna take it out um, completely off the bag, leave the bag attached, but we do want this end here. All right, so opening it up, get a little bit out. We don't need huge amounts just yet. The next thing we wanna do is find, um, uh, in this case, the shelter and the tabs here. Um, most of these shelter sheets or bashers or whatever you wanna call them are, um, uh, have loops at a number of points around it. Take one and go down one edge, threading each of those in together. And what this will do is draw the top together uh, and start to make that sort of billow shape that you want to catch the wind going down. Once you've done that, you can do whatever knot you want to tie this off. Um, in my case, I'm just gonna do a bowling um, to just complete the loop there, nice and tight, with all of that gathered in, ready to go. So in my experience, uh, there's, there's quite a few people that uh, struggle with the bowling. Um, and, and I did for a long time until somebody showed me this method uh, and it's really helped me out uh, so I'd like to show it to you now. Uh, first off, all you need to do when you, uh, when you need to make a bowline, find the point you want to, uh, take a twist in the rope like so. Really important to roll your thumb and finger, place a bite through the loop. 
Now keep it really loose. Once you've done that, you can then grab the end, go round wherever you need to go, and then place that, uh, that end there through the loop. Okay, you can drop it down. Now at that point, you can then pull this part here, the bit that's uh, going round in towards the end of the loop, pull it towards you, and we're going to do something called capsizing the knot, basically turning it inside out. And there you have a bowlin. Now all you need to do now is uh, tighten it up to the desired uh, length and tightness you want. So if I want to go nice and tight around here, all I do is I pull in the, the slack. Pull it in nice and tight. There we go. And you have your bowling ready to go. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with the uh, the setup of the the rope going from bow to stern, and this uh, this mast is going to be nice and rigid. So before you actually go and finish and and finally set up, don't forget to grab the rope that is attached to your sail and clip it into your carabiner. Because it's going to be just a little bit out of reach uh, by the time the mast is up. So we've got a mast up. This rope here uh, comes down to uh, the what is the stern seat of the raft and I've tied it onto the seat post um, and it is one of those quick release knots that we used when we uh, joined the bow and the stern together. So that's nice and tight, that's nice and rigid, we're looking good for that. Um, what we now need to do is hoist the sail um, and then um, make sure that all the boat is as clean as possible in, with regards to rope so that uh, we don't get caught up, we don't get tangled. So we've got to make sure this, uh, this sail does hoist. Not attached to anything at the bottom yet, but that does work. And also if you let go, then the, the sail does drop nice and freely so you can depower that, uh, that down, downwind sailing rig at any point, which is really, really important. Once I've done that, I'm just going to attach the, uh, the hoisted sail round the, the central fort here, the carrying yoke, uh, and uh, again, just in one of those quick release knots so it can be easily, easily grabbed and uh, depowered. Now, with all sailing, we like to do it in the wind, so putting the sails up and getting the last bit sorted can already be a little bit tricky. Now, uh, bear, that, bear that in mind when you're hoisting the sail. You can do some of this um, with the sail lowered, but it's a little bit easier in this weather to show you with the sail hoisted. What you want to do is to have uh, the sail itself out, set up, but most importantly around this front part here otherwise you won't get the full effect of the spinnaker so find one corner bring it round the front okay and then that can be pulled around to the side of the boat now with my shelter there's already straps attached or ropes attached rather uh, these are quite thin so that could cause you a little bit of problems um, when you're holding them and uh, fighting a nice strong wind uh, so you might want to think about putting uh, some floating line on instead. I'm going to stick with these small guy ropes though for now. So the way I'm going to play this, I think, is I'm going to um, I'm going to bring uh, keep this in a loop, and I'm just going to loop it over the wood just to help me out. But when we're sailing this, they should be stuck in your hand firmly. No, nothing around the loop but holding it in sort of a barring shape over like so, so that you can control and of course, let go if you need to. Once you've got one, make sure again that you've gone around this front part of front rope and set the next one up. Okay, and there we have it. A nice billowing spinnaker. Before we get this uh, pushed down into the water, we make sure all of our kit is with us and on us. Uh, there's one final bit of a kit we need to add to this downwind sailing rig in order to stay as safe as possible. So 
we've got one final throw, a throw line. Uh, we're going to attach that like normal to the stern of the boat. And as we push out onto the water and we get that wind uh, uh, behind us and filling the sail, we then want to let this rope out to its full extent. That's going to serve its purpose if somebody goes overboard. This rope hangs out behind us, can be uh, caught by the swimmer and you can hold on therefore by not losing us in the, uh, the, uh, the rig itself. Whilst that's happening, we can as quickly as possible drop the sails, depower the rig, get our paddles back out, paddle back to uh, pick up the swimmer. If not, hopefully just drag them in. So we're ready to go sailing. Um, when you get down to the water, just make sure you're wearing your normal uh, PPE uh, and a buoyancy aid at the very least. Um, don't forget that the uh, weight of you and your crew need to be pitched towards the back of the boat so uh, that it counteracts the amount of weight that that sail is, uh, is digging into that, that bow, okay? Um, use your paddles to, to steer the boat. Um, and also, don't forget, we've got a lot of rope kicking about. Um, obviously, it should be all stowed away and should be as clean as possible. Um, but uh, if there is any rope about, please make sure you have a knife accessible uh, at all times. All right, so we've talked about a raft and downwind setup today. Um, and don't forget though, that there's a number of ways of doing it. This is the way that I know and I've been successful with. However, it does depend on what kit you've got uh, to hand and uh, the environment that you're in. If you want to just harness the wind just for a short time, don't forget you can use yourselves. You can use your paddles to stand up and be, uh, cause a bit of wind resistance. You can use half poles instead of two large poles. You can use uh, paddles or poles stuck into a, uh, a bothy bag, you know, a shelter, um, that can create an improvised sail. All sorts of things uh, can be used to create some form of downwind setup. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video and you found it useful. If you've got any more questions that you need answered or information that you need to find, please go to our website, creativeoutdoorsuk.com or email us at info at creativeoutdoorsuk.com. Thanks very much. See you later.